in all my running around today, it dawned on me. One, I didn't post the video. I had to use my mobile data. That'll chew all that up for the long video that I made on the way here this morning. And then it dawned on me that I didn't update anybody. People were asking me questions about the horses I trained, and I forgot I didn't do a video about it. By the time it dawned on me, it was time to go race. And you know what? You get what you deserve sometimes in this game. So uh, we've been trying to... Mopar baby's dialed in. And we've been trying to uh, go easy with her, right? Because she can get a hot... She can get hot. We got her in the perfect class, in the perfect place. Everything is working great. So Jason had said, hey, do you just want to jog uh, Mopar baby a couple, of trips, a couple of trips? Sure. Go ahead. I usually go on the bike with her. Now, our hobbles are the best trotting hobbles in harness racing. There is no two ways about it. There's, it's, it is an unarguable fact. Pulleys are good. The ropes are good. The loops are good. But you still have to get stitched at the factory. And I can't even blame the stitching. So I'll tell you what happened. Um, I'm constantly ordering the pulleys. They, you know, the pulleys, they're under a lot of torque, but you still have to swap them out. They're easy to swap out. I just did those ones that broke. And it literally took me maybe a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. But because we didn't go a mile with Mo Power Baby, I heard, I felt them a little bit in the post parade, and I heard them uh, once in a while, you know, you get a rock in there or something. Something happens. You get a little friction, and then it just kind of grinds out, and away you go. Um, well... I felt it scoring down. I'm like, you know what? It's almost time to do these hobbles on this filly. I said, but... And it was just a, a fleeting thought. Coming to the half, I felt her grab them. And I said, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Next time, she grabbed them again and boom. It's it's the release you feel when the hobbles break. It's gut-wrenching immediately. It is... There is no denying the feeling. It just go. It feels like you just fell off something. The hobbles jerk and then nothing. And uh, as soon as I felt the second one, as soon as I felt her jerk it and I heard the hobbles make a noise and snap. Ripped the stitching on the hobbles. So I had to ask myself, did somebody miss something? Did we not check the stitching on these hobbles? Because, you know, I really, that stuff really bothers me, right? And everybody makes mistakes. I was driving home the other day in the pouring rain in Guelph. And this clearly suicidal goose walked right out in front of me. Clunk. All the kids are with me. Ollie goes, is that a speed bump? Yep. And Addie, Addie's four years old. She said, no, Dad, you hit a goose. No, I didn't. Of course, all the kids turn around, goose feathers everywhere. You can get arrested for that. Running over a goose, or killing a goose in Canada, would be the equivalent of mowing down a bald eagle with your drone in the United States. I felt terrible. Didn't sleep. Felt terrible. Anyway, people make mistakes, and I said, maybe somebody forgot the stitching. I'm mad now because had I gone a mile with Mo Power Baby before the races... Even though I didn't feel it was necessary, had I done that, I would have noticed right away that the hobbles were maybe needed fixing, and I would have been able to fix them as quick as I did after the race. So, um, I guess the only the only thing that keeps me sane is knowing that you can only make so much money and win so many races in that class. That class isn't going anywhere. She's going to win twice more in there. She is going to win her way out of that class and have to move up to where Hakati is right now. Where I think she can do. But she can only win two more races and that money. Had she won tonight or been second, she could still only win once more and then she'd be out. So the class really isn't going anywhere. We lost, I, I believe I was the winner. At very least, I was second. Uh, and it would have been a new lifetime mark for her. I felt when I went to flip her three deep uh, or was thinking about it that she looked like I could get from here to there, no problem. But that, I may have been wrong. She might have been a decent second, but she was going to be no worse than second. So we lost the money tonight, but that money really isn't going anywhere because we will saturate that class, be out of that class, and up into the next one. So I guess that's the only saving grace. Otherwise, I'd be pulling my hair out right now. Um, what else? Uh, born to Dance, oh my. 
you know, we warmed up Born to Dance tonight. Now, you got to understand, if you guys, if you've been with us, you know the stories behind Born to Dance. He sees everything. And we worked as hard as we could all winter long. Jason Merriman jogged that horse over the shadows of an open bridle all spring long. And he's better, but they still scare him. Now he's getting used to them. The problem is it's nighttime. He's never gone at nighttime. And they're new shadows in different places. The shadows that were in the far turn, they're not there tonight. They're in the first turn tonight. They're down the stretch tonight. And he caught a glimpse of one warming up. And I'm like, oh, no. Now, we have a shadow roll on him. I hate to wear them. Wore a shadow roll on the horse. We're going to have to wear a bigger shadow roll. I might even put the stupid zip tie thingies on them. Maybe even a screen. Because I can't race him like that. Right? Sit, sit, sit. You're at the mercy of the front end. Plus, you can't move him. We come out of the last turn. I saw the shadow across the track. And I'm like, I got to move him. I'm like, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Easy now. And then he went, oh, my God, what's that? And it was almost like he stopped and leapt over it a little bit with one foot and then the hind feet and then took off. It's the weirdest thing when horses jump shadows. The big giant ones, they're not scared of. It's those little bitty ones. The ones that from the light poles that go across the track. And then he took off. I, I'm, I'm assuming his last quarter was 27 and a piece. But he was probably going to run down the winter, I would imagine. Yeah, just... And, and then, of course, race is over. I got to go back, change my underwear, uh, change my suit. <laughs> no, I didn't. I knew he was, I knew there was probably a 91% chance that he was going to do it. But I had no recourse. There was nothing I could do. I guess I could have waited to move him until after. But that only goes back to my point. Okay, he's a big boy now. We have to work a little harder. We have to work a little harder to... Um, Put a bigger shadow roll on him. I hate it, but we're here now. We did everything we could. I did my best to teach you math. Now's the exam. Get to work. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Um, so born to dance, we're going to have to wear, a, a, I guess, a turned up shadow roll on him. Maybe put the dumb thingies on him and and uh, maybe even a screen on him too. But he'll get there. I mean, plenty fast. Um, did his work well tonight. Well mannered, just preoccupied with everything else going on. So... Um, both the horses race good. Mo got robbed. Again, I, I feel that's that's on me. I should have been here half an hour before. I should have went a mile with her last trip. It's just her knees bother, her feet bothers her. We were just trying to be nice to her, and it wasn't her fault. She she did her work. <laughs> anyway, um, that was tonight. What took place tonight? Uh, Mo got robbed. Uh, born to dance race good but again you can clear, clear as day you can see what took place in the race if you watch really close coming out of the first turn there's a, a kind of a bigger shadow there that wasn't there before and he skipped over that and then coming out of the last turn you can clearly see what he did uh, kind of jumped over jumped over that last shadow um, this morning uh, we had a great night so far we still have Stonebridge and Cotty left we still have uh, a horn player left so hope good luck to everybody Good luck to everybody in uh, those two races. Um, this morning, lots went on this morning. Now, I will, if you have stayed along for the 8 minutes and 33 seconds, big update here. I am going to scratch Mel Gibbs Swan and Blanton's Blue tomorrow. I'm going to tell you why. Now, Blanton's Blue is going to a stake next Thursday, okay? Uh, Mel Gibbs Swan is not. But I do have pull the shoes in at uh, the Meadows tomorrow. I have to leave by 1240. I am leaving at 1230, 1240. No matter who is qualified, Luke or Jason is somebody else going to go with them. I am going to be there to go last trip with Pull the Shoes. Um, and those horses are after that. I wanted to go a real good mile with Blanton's Blue. And I just don't want to put an unfamiliar driver behind him and put him in a spot where maybe he's not comfortable. So I'm just going to train him in the morning. Now, that is on the heels of some very, very strong training miles today. Now, for Al and other people saying, well, Mel really doesn't have to race till July 15th. no. Mel has a stake on July 15th. He has to be ready to rock on July 15th. Mile and 2-4. He was going to go mile in two minutes tomorrow. Instead, he will still go mile in two minutes, but he's going to do it by himself in the morning with me. I'm going to train Blanton's Blue and Mel Gibbs one tomorrow in around two minutes. Uh, no problem. And you may say, that's a lot. Hold the phone. Uh, this morning, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trainers. Uh, we went in two sets of two, Jason Merriman and I. Gypsy, uh, Gypsy Hill, I went with, and Jason Merriman went with Royal Emeralds. 
2-1 last half and 58. They're both very, very strong. Really happy with Gypsy. A little rolly in the turns, but uh, we got to change his boots behind. We changed his shoes up front. We got to change his boots behind. We got to do his stifles. And anyway, lots of time between now and then. We'll get a race or two into Gypsy Hill before Sciota, but he looked very good today. And as did Royal Emerald. Strong two there. Victory Blue Chip. This reminds me again, I have to make a, a shoeing adjustment. I am going to speak to the blacksmith. Uh, we're going to switch victory blue chip around starting tomorrow. He trained good 2-4 last half in a minute and four lengths behind me was Lebecca in action. She came back good a uh, mile and 2-4 four and 4 for her. So she was really good. Really impressed with both those two and all four of them starting out. Now the last three I went with myself. Really don't care. Uh, I went a mile and 2-1. She made a break right at the wire getting into her knee. She's a little frustrated. I think she doesn't like to train that much by herself anyway. I was tempted to put an open bridle on her, and I may actually train her in an open bridle when I come back on Saturday, just a, a mile and a half. Uh, wait, no. I'm not coming here on Saturday. No. I'm going to the... I might have to go to the Meadows. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so, so, really don't care. A good mile, but still... Not right up on her toes, and a, and a, and uh, she's coming. She's coming. A couple more miles, we'll be there. The reason I did that, and the reason I'm talking like this, is because I'd like to go to Buffalo, but I don't know if we're going to go in the Excelsior A or the Sire Stakes. I don't want to put her in the Sire Stakes just because we all believe she's a Sire Stake filly if she's not quite ready to go there. I thought she'd be. I was sure she was, and she may still be, but I still had some reservation this morning. Nonetheless, a good mile by herself today for really don't care. Now, the next two kind of stole the show. I went out with memory and imagination. And we had taken all the weight off him because he got up into his elbows. I took the toe weights off him, lightened his shoes up. And I trained him today in 57 and 4 off a half in a minute. And that is by himself. And, and today, make no mistake, it was cool today. For those of you who woke up in Ontario or even here in, in Ohio, at least northern Ohio, it was a little chilly. And a brisk wind, and a brisk wind the, this morning also. A huge mile from memory and imagination. Well in hand, did it well. Scotty was right. He said he, he called him sneaky good the other day. Now, for those of you saying Anthony, he went 2-3, then he went 57. Guys, I schooled him at 2-1 before he ever qualified in 2-3. So memory and imagination. Uh, it might have been 58. That's intense of a second doesn't matter what it was. It was an incredibly good mile. And uh, I, I made a point to go down and look. Lauren's been working hard and doing a great job with this horse. And he, all winter and spring long, he just pecked at his feet and wasn't sharp and, you know, just looked a little dull and woody. And she has worked her butt off because the horse has dapples on him now. He's put on the weight he needs. He's shiny. And these quicker miles will really start to pick him up. He was looking for his lunch when I went by. And I'm just going to check and see if, he, if he's eating his supper. But he looked unbelievably good. And not quite there, but just on his heels was the horse I trained last in the race bike today. Vaccaro Blue Chip. I trained him in 58 off a half in a minute also. He was very very good. I don't know if the aluminums we put on him behind are very beneficial. I suspect he's going to wear through them pretty quick and will probably be the last time we put them on him. I think we can go back to, I put aluminums on him up front, which is kind of rare for, for a horse, but he's going to wear them and so will Victory Blue Chip actually. Um, it's kind of rare to have those shoes on a, on a two-year-old trotter, but he's trotting great. I think the problem is behind they're going to end up jamming him up too much. I suspect by uh, the weekend or the start of next week, you're going to see a lot of wear on the outside of those aluminum shoes. And that's what happens. A horse get a little sore on those lower hocks and up on their back. They get underneath themselves. They narrow themselves up behind. They're a little jammy when they trot. And you'll see the outside of those shoes wear off really, really quick. And I think that's what we're going to see with Vaccaro Blue Chip. But um, it, it's pretty simple. Just put, instead of going with aluminums on them, and i got a little shim on them anyway, I think we'll go to a, a full swedge just a little longer on him just to help hold him up a little bit and uh, I think that'll be the trick for this guy but man he was so this is by himself today by the way in, on a windy day those were two very 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 big uh, miles from those horses today so a fantastic day of training hey, pitch Mo 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 Power Baby sharp as a tack she's feeling good that's not her fault the hobbles broke and you know whose fault it is mine should have went a mile with her I should have checked the hobbles out and I didn't I took for granted they were okay and they were not it took two seconds to fix after that $50 pulley that I just put on those hobbles cost us 4700 US at the very least 2350 so as I said the only saving grace in my mind the only thing from uh, me pulling my hair out right now is that we really can only make so much money and win so many races in that class she's got two wins left in that class and uh, once she gets to 30 grand done 
She's got to go up a class, which I am sure she can do in. We're going to have a lot of fun with this mare, all this filly, all summer long. These are great classes for her. And I had a couple of people asking, you know, are, are she going to end her back in Indiana? Maybe. Not for a while. I like the fact that she's 1 to 5, 3 to 5, 4 to 5, going for $9,500, and she's going to graduate and do just fine in the 11000 class. That's a lot of fun. So that's where we're going to keep her. So for those of you that are still watching this video, right, Blanton's Blue, Mel Gibswan, both scratch tomorrow. I'm going to train them here in two minutes tomorrow morning. No problem whatsoever. Don't worry about Blanton's Blue next week. Uh, he'll be ready to rock at Yonkers and tight as a fiddle. Ready to go at Yonkers for next week. And um, Mel Gibswan, a good mile into him. We'll start getting a race in him. He may end up just going down to Indiana and racing in an overnight. Uh, we'll see how that plays out here in the next little while. But for right now, a great day of training. Pretty good day so far. Born to dance. Almost made me poop a little, but did his work very good. Uh, we know that that's a, an inferiority in that horse. He sees stuff. He looks around. Uh, we're now going to have to address it properly. We're here now. We're racing now. Probably going to put a turned up shadow roll on him. Maybe a screen on him and you'll see him back in next week. We just slowly but surely, this is a big, powerful colt. I think you're going to see him do really good things for us this summer. So with that, I'm going to let you go. I'm all done for the early part of the card. I got a catch drive apparently in the 7th. Somebody just told me about. We got Hakati in the 8th. We have Horn Player in the 14th. And somebody asked me to drive one in the 15th. Uh, and then we're all done for the evening. Now, tomorrow's going to be a lot of fun. Got to train the babies I talked about. We're going to train B. Lisa. because She's going to race in the following week. We are going to uh, qualify a bunch of babies, 10 or 12 or something. And then off to the meadows. I'm going to have so much fun. I can't wait to race. Um, can't wait to race. Pull the shoes. And uh, Yo Mister. I'm going to get a chance to sit behind Yo Mister for the first time. Now, Saturday, big question mark. I don't think Ronnie Wren can take Spitfire. 100 grand they're racing for. Wow. I don't think he can take Spitfire. I don't think he can take Kings County. And if that's the case, I guess I'm going to have to be go... I'm going to have to miss a couple of Ollie's ball games. He is playing twice more on Sunday. Uh, I'll go over Saturday morning, maybe take Ava and Addie with me if they want to come for a drive. Go to the Meadows, watch the horses race, and then come right home. I can't. Addie will. Addie will be up for it, but I think Ava's old enough now to know that's not cool. <laughs> so <laughs> I will talk to you all very soon. I hope you had a wonderful day today. It's starting off pretty good. Pitch, mole power, baby. I'm sorry. There's not much we can do about that. Uh, she'll redeem herself. She'll redeem it. My mistake next week. Take care.